Did you just put an upgraded camshaft in your 2007 or 2013 GM pickup truck? Did you have to do that because the DOD lifters collapsed and took out the camshaft? Would you like to be able to start it and actually hear it idle, drive, and chop today? Do you want to be able to drive it to the dyno shop that way you can have it tuned? Or better yet, would you like to learn how to tune it? If you'd like to, if you see a plus sign by my profile picture, go ahead and click that and follow along. Lesson number two starts right now. All right, so let's get to work. We're going to go up top left-hand corner, click the file folder. We're going to open up our stock file. Uh, today I decided to use a 2013 Silverado 5.3 as that engine has DOD and VVT, so that way I can show you how to do that. So that we can actually double click this and this will open up our folder. I'm going to come over here to engine. And the very first thing you want to do with a truck that had DOD on there is you want to disable the DOD. Um, if you haven't ever disabled DOD on your vehicle and you've installed the camshaft, you try to start it, you probably heard it start up and sound like a tractor where it's only running on four cylinders. That's what it's actually doing. Um, so we're going to come down here and click fuel. We're going to go to lean slash fuel savings and we're going to disable DOD. All right, so the next step, um, 2009 and a half or so to 2013 have VVT. So we need to disable that as well as these camshafts are not VVT. Now, if you have a smaller VVT cam, this is a step you will ignore for right now. So we're going to go to airflow. We're going to go to variable camshaft and we're going to set these camshafts to none. And that's going to allow the vehicle to actually start and idle. Now, that being said, once it's starting and idling, it's going to try to idle low. So now let's fix that. So we're going to come over here to idle, base set point, and truck Norris Chapacabra usually will just like the Gen 3 video. Um, it's going to need an extra 200 RPM, so click this top left-hand corner to highlight all. Type in 200, and that's it. We'll move on. Uh, startup. We're going to click park neutral. We're going to highlight up here, and we're going to add 200 to this as well. Uh, we're going to go to end gear. This table is really unused, but I like to be uniform in all my adjustments. So we're going to click this. We're going to highlight all. We're going to add 200. I'm going to close that out. Uh, minimum set point. This is basically a rolling idle. Um, stock torque converter vehicle. I'll go in and make this video about stock torque converter. Um, usually those will, 725 is about all they'll want to do. So we'll actually just make this whole table 725. Now, if you have an aftermarket torque converter, you can just do what we would normally do and highlight all and add 200. Um, but we'll just keep this for stock torque converter at the moment. Um, so we're going to close this out. Over here we've got minimum RPM reference. Um, this again is the RPM that the ECU wants to target um, for adaptive idle. So we're going to make this 725. All right, we're going to go to airflow. Um, we're going to go to airflow final minimum. Now on the Gen 3 video it was super simple. You just click it, multiply it times 2 and call it good. On these if you try to do that the truck's going to try to drive itself down the road. Um, so the best thing to do is we're going to come over here to 200 to 800 and we're going to add 8 grams per second. Now if you notice this unit right here, I'm at grams per second. Um, you can click this and change the units. I do not comprehend pound per hour of airflow. I've just always associated with grams per second. So I would like you guys to make the same changes in grams per second. So you click that till you see grams per second, 8, and we're going to hit plus. All right, from 2000 RPM and above, um, we'll highlight it. Let's add 4. Um, and we're going to click plus on that one. And then let's highlight between 800 and 2000. Click this button right here. You'll see where it says interpolate between horizontal bounds. Click that. That will smooth out the airflow. Now, again, these are very rough um, adjustments, but this will allow the truck to start, run, and drive. Um, as it's dialed in, these numbers won't be exactly eight um, as far as the adder goes. You may have to um, come down here. Obviously, this is the gear axis. Uh, you may want to reduce the airflow in neutral or park, and you may need more airflow in first gear because of the torque converter being too tight. Uh, but these adjustments that I've shown you will exactly will get the vehicle up and running. All right, so we're going to close that out. Next, we're going to have to add airflow for startup. Um, so we're going to click startup airflow. Again, I'm working in grams per second. If you need to change it, just keep clicking this until you see grams per second. Um, Truck Norris Chapacabra. Uh, these camshafts usually don't need a whole lot of startup airflow as long as you get startup fueling correct. Um, but just to get the ball rolling, we'll just highlight all. And we're going to add 3 grams per second to the entire table. Again, this is going to be something by feel. You're going to have to make adjustments after the fact. Um, but this will get the vehicle running. So we're going to close that out. All right, now we're going to go to airflow tab. Um, under airflow tab, we're going to go to general. Uh, under general, you see Kraken VE and primary. Uh, we open up this table. Now before in Gen 3, uh, this table was actually a VE table, so it had volumetric efficiency numbers. This table that we're seeing is actually a percentage of volumetric efficiency. So with these camshafts, larger camshaft needs less startup fuel. 
uh, Chapacabra Truck Norris is usually 20% less. So we can click all and we can actually just type in 80 and hit enter. And it will now we're at 80% of the original cranking fuel. So we close that out. Um, while we're at this table, we can go and add a little bit of fuel to the math. Um, keep in mind, the GM vehicles primarily use math for fueling. Um, this is a reference of airflow. Um, and obviously, when you have more airflow, you need more fuel. Um, so the camshaft, we've added more air. So let's click airflow versus frequency. And let's come over. Now, this is a 2D chart. The higher the frequency, um, the more airflow the engine's moving, which means it's more wide open throttle stuff. So we're going to scroll over here until we see 7,050. Um, on 0708 vehicles, you may actually have two charts, one that's a low frequency and one's a high frequency. But on both types of vehicles, 7,000 hertz and above, let's just add some 7% fuel. So what we do is we're going to come over here and we're going to type in 1.07. This is a multiplier, so this will add 7%. So once we typed in 1.07, we're going to hit the multiply button. We're going to scroll back over here. And to smooth out our fuel changes, we're going to highlight from 7,050. And let's go down to 5,700. Um, once we've done that, we're going to click this interpolate between horizontal bounds. And that's just going to smooth out the, the fuel change that we just made. Um, if you'd like to see the 2D version, you can click right here and click 2D. And you can expand it just like normal as you would in Windows or any other type of computer. And by doing that, you'll see we have a smooth graph. Now up here, you see this, this dip? This is a factory dip. Um, your truck will never, ever, ever hit this amount of airflow unless you're turbo. And if you're at that point, you're not going to be watching a base tuning video anyways. So just ignore this up here. There's no reason to change it. All right, so we're going to close this out. And really at that point, we don't need to make any other changes. Um, this truck will actually start, run, and drive to the dyno shop. Um, so all we've got to do is come up here to file. We're going to click save as. And let's change the name of this from 2013 Silverado 53 stock. Uh, we'll just call it Truck Norse. And put mod at the end and we will click save and that is it so it's that simple those handful of adjustments we just made is going to allow your vehicle to start run and drive whether it be to the dyno shop or if you need to take it somewhere to have it tuned or if you just want to keep sticking around and learn how to tune we're going to handle those videos as well now again these are basic 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 adjustments and this is all that's needed for it to start and run this is by no means a final tune this is not uh, anything that I would release on a customer vehicle. This is just for you to get the basics going. Uh, again, if you see the plus sign next to my profile picture, click that. Uh, also, Cash App tags up top. You want to buy me a beer for this information as I'm not charging for it. Um, and yeah, follow along and I'll see you later. Have a good day.